Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper and in this video I want to introduce a new project that I'm working on that I've actually just wrapped up and I'm ready to deploy and install is a home built cistern or water tank level monitoring system that's network accessible over the internet or in my case through the Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network or ARDEN. For those of you who follow my channel you know that a few years ago I built a rainwater collection system out at our retreat in West Virginia and I've automated the rainwater collection process but I still have mechanical gauges and with the magic of editing I'll insert some screenshots from previous videos showing the collector and the mechanical gauge. So as I collect rainwater I would always have to go up and check the mechanical gauge and I had some problems with the gauges, a string would get tangled up in the tank so I needed a new solution that I could do this remotely and automate this process because right now I'm overseas so I can't get out there look at the gauge, i got to call a neighbor. I searched online for commercial products and there are a few out there but they were very proprietary and or the ratings weren't very high so I figured let's try to build something that I could use for myself and that people in the prepping community might want. What you're looking at here is a 3D printed box I 3D printed this box with my Creality CRS10 Pro 3D printer. I did the box, or the two boxes, this cooling fan mount, and underneath this power supply here is an insulator that's also 3D printed. In the main box, behind that is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus microcomputer. Of course, a cooling fan and a 12 volt to 5 volt power supply that powers the Raspberry Pi. Now in a standalone configuration you could use this at a retreat location or where you have a cistern and use the Wi-Fi capability of the Pi to join your local area network. In my setup here I added an annex box so I can add an Arden or Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network node on the side with its own power supply and an antenna. This card in here is a GL iNet travel router and I'll put a link down below that has been reflashed with the Arden firmware and I removed it from its original housing and remounted it in this 3D printed box. I bought some, I'm going to call them weather resistant, I don't think they're weatherproof connectors but they work really well, they're keyed so you can only put them in one direction. The inputs of course are 12 volts which go up through the switch to the power supply which powers the Pi the switch also controls the power supply for the Arden node. This plug here has six conductors, a common ground, which is this black wire over here, and then five leads coming in that go through a 1000 K ohm resistor and then connect to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins, or general purpose input-output pins. So what's happening here, there's a custom piece of code written in Python that monitors the state of the GPIO pins which are connected to float switches in my tank and I'll insert a screenshot to show you what I'm talking about there. So what I have now in West Virginia are these float switches mounted to a vertical PVC pipe separated along these percentages of the tank so as the water level goes up and down right now the float switches close or open and turn little LEDs on that I have on top of the tank but again I have to be there locally. So what we're going to do here is disconnect that little LED box I have out there connect this wiring harness to the existing switches so as the switches open and close with the water level going up and down it'll change the state on these GPIO pins and then change the LEDs here in the local position and also update a web page which is loaded on a web server in this Raspberry Pi so I can come in over the, the internet through a tunnel or through the Arden Mesh radio network put the IP address in for the Pi and I'll get a web page of a water tank with the different levels the 10, the 25, 50, 75, 100 so while I'm traveling if the water tank gets low and we're going to have rain I can open up the collection system open up the gate valves to let the water come in and then I can monitor how much water I'm collecting. So before I roll over to the software or the web interface to show you that, I'll show you how the jumpers here work. I have this little breadboard. This is a ground. So right now this is flashing red, which means we're below 10%. As a 
really low level and I wanted something that would catch my eye. So let's say we start collecting a little bit of rainwater and the first flow switch closes. Now that 10% light will just stay red. Collect a little more water, water level rises, the 25% flow switch comes up and activates. Now we're at the 25% level. And we can keep walking this up. 50, 75, and 100. Now while the Raspberry Pi is changing the state of these LEDs to correspond to the water level, it's also refreshing that information on the web server. So if you come in over the network, you're also seeing the water level over the network. The refresh rate is much faster with the LEDs and it's set up that way so if you're getting a water delivery, we have a water delivery service if we really need it, I can watch the level as the tank is filling up. Whereas the web page refreshes every 60 seconds. So that's a mechanical overview of the cistern level or water tank level project. I'll go ahead and normal all this up and put the covers back on and then we'll roll over to the software so you can see that. I'll be right back. All right, we got everything closed up. This is what it's going to look like when I ship it back to West Virginia to get it mounted underneath my collector. This is not a waterproof box. You could probably buy an ABS project box online that is waterproof, but then you have to worry about cooling for the Raspberry Pi. So I put some vents here to let air pass through. Maybe I could put this in a larger box that's vented. So to roll over to the software piece, I've left the simulated float switches in the 50% setting. So now I'll go over to the desktop capture software and show you what this looks like. Browsing through the Arden network. I don't have this connected to my Wi-Fi. It's actually connected to Arden. So I'll go through my node and then go out here and access this. And you'll actually see that web page with the water level. Be right back. All right, we're connected to my laptop here. I'll go ahead and open up my Firefox browser. And now I'm connected to my USB Arden node, which is a little travel router with Arden loaded on it, connected to my laptop, which has a radio link out to the cistern node, which was in the green box. And then I have a hyperlink here to the cistern level. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And there we have it. So like the simulated switches represented on the breadboard, it's showing that I have a water level of 50%. And this would refresh every 60 seconds. So as the switches go up and down, these bars would subtract or get added for 175, 50, 25, then the 10. And below 10% here on the web page, it doesn't flash, it actually turns red. So this is my homebrew cistern level monitoring system. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I am putting together a shopping list of the different parts you need from Amazon if you're going to try to build one of these yourselves. I'll get this thing packaged up, mail it back to West Virginia, and try to talk my neighbor into installing it for me. So then we can actually go in over the mesh, like I can do here now, and access the rainwater collection system. So right now I can go out from Germany through the mesh, and check the battery voltages up at my rainwater collector that would power this. So let's see if that comes up here. So there we have uh, 24 volts for the PoE injector. Uh, main battery or the main power supply is 12.25 and the batteries themselves are 12.4. So that's my goal is to get all this automated. I can actually go in and open and close the gate as well. In fact I should be able to pull up the camera and show you that real quick and then we'll go ahead and wrap up the video. I can actually activate one of the relays out there to open the gate valve to let the water come off the surface and go down into the tanks. Let's see if we can get this to come up. Alright, let's see if this works and then we'll wrap this video up for you. And what do we have? All right, so I have two solar panels. This is here is the input to the system. And this light here that you see is actually the little bank of LEDs that I'm currently using 
that are connected to my float switches. This will go away and those wires will connect to the box. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper with a video introducing a new project. Uh, even though I'm overseas, I'm still working on the retreat location and trying to get things ready. And it looks like we're about to have some car traffic here. Thanks for watching, everybody.